Elizabeth. Frank's number two ex-wife, Liz Robinson. They arrived in this morning's mail. Is this some um, cocaine being sniffed off your belly, Liz? Oh, come on, Liz, what is this? You're a big girl, you want to hang around on boats and let human garbage sniff cocaine off your belly? I'm sorry, that's your problem. You cop it, you wear it. I didn't it. know it happened until I saw these photos. Well, your wife's the subject of an extortion attempt, Mr Menzies. They want a million dollars. One million dollars. Looks like the only way to do it, boss. Righto. Let's do it. I'll be you. I'll drive the launch and don't worry, I won't bend it. No, it's all right, Frank. I'm already involved in this. I'll be me. Mr Menzies is safely in his boat. Yeah, we got him. The launch blew up. There was another bomb. The divers are down there, but they haven't found him yet. He has to let the house. Any news from the search? Right. Right. Yeah, OK. Thanks. Uh, Mrs Menzies, I rang in. There's no word on your husband. Businesses and that babe of a wife, why would he want to shit through? I wouldn't know, son. But his body's not down here and the sharks didn't have time and he's not Mandrake the magician. Yeah, hang on, Taylor. Uh, Miss Robinson, we've just had a query. Was your husband a diver? Yeah, he's quite good. Was. Uh, does he keep the gear in the house or...? or... No, he, he kept it on the launch. Right. Uh, Taylor, yeah, apparently he was a recreational diver. Kept the gear on the launch. Yeah, maybe you should try and locate it. OK, bye. Are you implying that Lloyd staged all this and left me? No. No. Do you think that? All he'd need is another boat. Um, I just need to think this through. You know where we are, Liz? Police. Sydney Water Police, this is the nemesis. Sabo has been reported missing from Rose Bay this morning. Has been sighted near heads heading out to sea. Copy that, Sydney Water Police. Nemesis clear. Tommy, we've got a job. Gotta go, Sarge. See ya, Tommy. Clear! Sydney.
Sydney Water Police. This is Diver's work boat. Is that the healthiest you could find? What? Australian meat? Australian veg? It's a balanced diet, mate. He lived in Birchgrove until last year. Parents split up, mother went back to Auckland. Buster flies in for an access visit with his dad, but his dad doesn't show up to the airport. He manages to lose their airline staff member that's looking after him and makes his way back to Birchgrove. Unfortunately, nobody home. Discovers the Sabo and decides to make his way back to Auckland in it. Gutsy kid. Well, that is one relieved airline, I can tell you. Father's still not answering. Why well, we should try the mum in New Zealand. I told you, she's going around the North Island on Rocky's Harley. Yeah, well, we should try anyway, mate. What colour's the bike? Black. Rocky is your mum's boyfriend, yeah? He looks like him, but with long hair. Same skin colour? Same size. Sounds like a fine specimen. What does your mum look like? I've got a photo. I want that back. You'll get it back. Taylor, contact the Auckland police. We're looking for a Māori or a Samoan. That's a picture of her. They're on a black Harley somewhere in the North Island. That should be simple. We'll have a look at the father's house. Mm -hmm. Well, I do a long distance check on a place around about the same size as England. Very simple. Let's go. Ah, guys. The divers have found remnants of what could have been the explosive device. Bomb disposer on their way to pick them up. What about his scuba gear? Nothing. Hey, thanks, Helen. We're looking at two crimes or one here. Someone takes shots of Liz with cocaine around the belly and then blackmails her. We provide the money for the sting operation, which it now looks like her husband stole from under our noses. So, was Lloyd the cook? Did he set this up from day one? And is his wife in it with him? Well, I mean, she's in a big law company. She's going to be partner. It'd be crazy, wouldn't it? Yeah. Anyway, uh, Jerry Blast. I invited them to the party. He's due back from the US, yeah? Yeah. Oh, man, I feel so bad about this. Why is that, Mr. Blast? Well, why wouldn't I? You invite a friend and his wife to a party, the wife gets blackmailed and your friend gets blown up? Well, we know Lloyd Menzies is missing. We're not sure if he's dead. You think of any reason why he'd want to go missing? Absolutely none. No, uh, Lloyd's got Sydney at his feet. He's a star. He's a cook. He's an entrepreneurial chef. And these days, that's like being a rock star. Movie star, top of the line hairdresser. Were you on the charter boat at the party? Yeah. Did you see anyone photographing um, Ms Robinson? No, no, I was uh, below decks with Cindy Malone and her people. Did you know there was cocaine on the boat? Absolutely not. But then that's what I would say, isn't it? So you're lying? No. Look, when I was with the band, I uh, did a lot of substances. Yeah? But you grow up, you decide to stay alive. So that's personal, but also there's business. Now, the party on the boat was for Cindy Malone, who these days is ultra clean. I mean, her people were drinking bloody water. Flat water, no bubbles even. <laughs> So, Chick Benson? Uh, Chick, he's sort of like a snake you can almost trust not to bite you. You know what I mean? So, he gets invites to places other people wouldn't. Now, you pull a stunt like this, word goes round, door slams shut. 
million dollars wouldn't convince him, would it? It's a lot of money. Tommy, there it is, up there behind the flagpole, that's house. Sanchi, take a set. Got it. Mr. Wallace, Sydney Water Police. He wasn't here this morning either. I looked. Mr. Wallace! Oh, I'll check through here. Buster, what's up here? That's the roof. You can't get up there. It's blocked off. What about over there? What's over there? It's my bedroom. You wait here. I'll check it out, huh? There, Mr. Wallace. There's nobody there, huh? Don't worry, Buster. We'll find your dad. Come on. You reckon that place would be worse, Archie? Way too much for us, mate. Why? You thinking of buying? Well, I'm gonna take a shot in the dark here, Tommy. Are you getting married? What? Well, if you're thinking of buying a house, that only means you've popped the question and Rhonda said yes. Yeah, well, that's none of your business. When did you ask her? <sighs> Last night. <laughs> but you can't tell. Enough reason to get the lads together for a drink, eh? Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, the father lives there, all right, but there's still no sign of him. Have you heard from Auckland yet? Nothing yet. OK, well, we've got the father's full name and address now, so we'll be able to get his car rego broadcast. Are you ready? Yeah, go. You know, if you sold your house, Frank, you'd be able to pay the department back the money you lost. I didn't lose it. Lloyd Menzies stole it. Go soon, yeah. All right, send her up. I left the Olympic security material on your desk. Helen, it was fantastic. Look, why don't you take a couple of days off in lieu for the extra hours that you put in? I know you're a bit disappointed you weren't able to leave in that evening. Still no news of uh, Lloyd or the money. No, no, that's not why I'm here. I, I got a fax. Um, they say they're going to bomb everything and, and the price has gone up to two million. Two million? Jeff's going to love this one. Two million? <laughs> no way. We're not playing. We thought you might feel like that. Yeah, why don't we just lock them up like we're paid to do? Now, what can you tell us about Jerry Blast? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm finding it hard to concentrate on this while Lloyd's missing or dead or... I just keep seeing him washed up somewhere or lying in the bottom of the harbour. Now, if Lloyd was at the bottom of the harbour, Liz, the divers would have found him. So, you really think he's run off with the money? What do you think? Well, I think that you've got a guilty conscience. I think you're blaming the victim. Eh? Hey? Well, it, was, it was your sting. You, you sent Lloyd off to be the messenger boy, but it was your job. What, so I'm the one that should have got blown up on the boat? Is that what you'd like? Look. Look, Liz, we just need your input. Okay, before I go, what's happening with Tiger here? Well, we've organised a social worker from the Department of Community Services. But she's been delayed. Okay, duty of care. That means two of you will have to stay with him until she arrives, a woman being one of those two. Ah, it's a sad old world, isn't it, Sarge? For your own protection, Tommy. So, what do we do now? <laughs> Ah, uh, Buster, this is Rhonda. 
Ronnie, this is Buster. You see, Buster, Rhonda's Tommy's fiance, which means they're getting married. You've been bragging what? already. Yeah, seriously. Look, <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't meet you at the hospital, but Buster's just, just arrived from New Zealand. There seems to be a, a mix-up. We can't find his parents, so we're waiting on a social worker. And you want me to see him? No. Well... You are so transparent. Well, this is a plot, right? You think if I see this kid, I want six of my own? Yeah, but you're such a natural woman, you probably want them anyway. In hospitals, you see what can go wrong with kids. Yes, but in loving families, you can see what can go right. Well, you should have shown me a baby. I didn't have a baby. Boys that age are fiends in human flesh. Did I tell you that Buster wanted to come and stay with us? You're gonna call my dad, aren't you? I sure am, mate. He's all right. <laughs> yes, right to this moment, I thought so too. Well, grab your bag, Buster. You paid him to say that. That's a foul. I should get you ticked off. No airline on my list has heard of him. Nor mine. So Buster's dad drives out to Sydney Airport to pick up Buster, who's coming in on a flight from New Zealand. He parks his car, but he doesn't catch any other flight. And then disappears. Good there, Sykes. Get the nemesis ready. We're taking the VIPs out in the harbour. So, come on. Let's make sure she doesn't run out of gas. Commissioner's office just phoned. The International Olympic Committee people are dropping around this morning, and I want everyone on their toes. What's he talking about? I think he means do up your tie. <laughs> Stupid bloody Olympics. Be a disaster. I think I'll stay as I am. Uh, this is our main wharf along here. You can see one of these police launches there. That's the, the Nemesis. And uh, alongside, there's a boat there from the National Parks and Wildlife with whom we enjoy a close working relationship. All right, now, if you'd like to move this way, uh, shortly we'll be proceeding down the harbour under the bridge and uh, turning left there at Port Denison. But for the moment, we'll just head downstairs. I think it's very important that we have a meeting with the people who control the port. I don't know if it's the next one. Are they your intelligence people? Perhaps I might have a word with them before we leave. No, 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 they're just detectives. Blakemore's on leave at the moment. If you'd like to step into my office, thank you. Lloyd Menzies has got a record. Possession of dope at the age of 19. Doesn't make him a Napoleon a crime. Yeah, let's check Chick Benson. Okay. Age 19, possession of dope. Same address, they were sharing a place together. Here we go, it's the third guy. Same address, same date, same charge. Gerald Hamburger. What sort of name's Gerald Hamburger? Well, it's not a stage name, that's for sure. I'm really very impressed, Chief Inspector. Yes, thank you. The operational contingencies and disaster plan you have in place? This general air of efficiency? Well, we take pride in being the best, sir. Thanks, Tabita. Sick. Getting sick. Big AG Sydney Water Police is the police launch nemesis. I just had an idea about Buster's dad. So, Taylor, how'd you go? Ah, you were right. They're expecting ah. you. Ah, you thought I would make a good detective, mate. Huh? Off you go. Is that him, Buster? That's him. I knew something and stopped him. Hey, Dad! Buster! Sailing to New Zealand, eh? Probably could have made it, too. He's a fine little sailor. Yes, well, I wouldn't encourage him. Not for a year or two. I waited for you at the airport. I had this silly little problem with my heart. Nothing to worry about. But they had to do a few tests. Gerald Hamburger? That's your real name, isn't it? Gerald Hamburger. No, it isn't. Well, I tell you, the mugshots look a lot like you. Yeah, well, I had it changed by deep pool 12 years ago. Yeah, but you are the Gerald Hamburger that lived with Lloyd Menzies and Chick Benson, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we were students sharing a house together. We grew our own, got busted. 
done a lot of bloody things since. Okay, so now you've found a terrible secret. What else can I do for you? Well, you could tell us what else you know about Lloyd Menzies. I've told you all I know. Now, if you don't mind, folks, I've got to get down to the studio. So if you'll excuse me. A German name, wouldn't it? So, you and uh, Jerry Blast and Lloyd Menzies, you all shared a house together as students. Yeah. One time we were busted for dope, so what? So maybe the three of you are in this together. In what together? You know, even a million bucks split three ways isn't real tempting. None of us are just doing time for that. Yes, many would. I'm afraid I'm not that desperate. Still into drugs, are you, Chick? <sighs> Sometimes. You got a little stash at the studio? Well, that's for me to know and you to find out. Well, we can get a warrant so we can find out, can't we? <laughs> Go ahead. Why don't you go for Jerry and Lloyd while you're at it? What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. It means nothing. We were told Lloyd Menzies hates drugs. I mean, his wife Liz, she said that if he found out that uh, cocaine was getting sniffed off a belly button, he'd freak out. That'd be the end of the marriage. Uh-huh. That doesn't surprise you? <laughs> the parties I go to, nothing has surprised me. Your Lick today. your lips for us, darling. Did you say something to me? Chick, I think you can go now. Yeah. Right. Just had another phone call. Public phone box. Yeah, thanks. No, it's in court number three. Upstairs. Yeah. Yeah, no. Something you want to tell me, Jeff? Can I call you back on that? OK, bye. About the Olympic people arriving this morning? Oh, yes, they arrived rather unexpectedly. And you didn't think to pick up the phone? Well, you were taking time off in Lou. Yeah, and you didn't pick up the phone. Helen. Now, look. The rewards of this job are not just financial, Jeff. God help us if they were. You blocked my temporary promotion, you had me working day and night on this thing, and when the payoff came, you didn't pick up the phone. Helen. They were very impressed with your work. No, no, no. They were very impressed with what they thought was your work, or so they told Superintendent Theodore half an hour ago. Chief Inspector Hawker, they said, king of disaster planning. Helen, I know I mentioned your contribution. Contrib contribution? Hello? I wrote the whole damn thing, and you know it. We ought to be out there talking to me. Said she is. Yeah, I know, but the sooner we solve this, the sooner she can start dealing okay. with it. Okay. There you go. Um, there's no milk. Sorry, I haven't been shopping. It's okay. Phone, fax, two different MOs. Here, Goldstein. Yep. You got my address. Got it, thanks. Could you tell the patrol commander we're coming onto his patch? We'll meet the detectives there. Thanks. He's getting desperate. He's getting desperate. He could be dangerous. Hi, this is my partner. Keep it right. Good. Flat number three, first floor. Three. Right. You got the keys? Yeah, I want them back. No Let's one's go. left since we've arrived. Yeah, you just wait here till we get back.
Lloyd Mins is you're under arrest. You're not obliged to say or do anything unless you wish to do so. But whatever you say or do will be recorded and may be used in evidence. Do you understand that? There's no law against breaking up a marriage, is there, Frank? One fax machine. One bag of Colombian marching powder. Hmm, someone's been making paper dolls. Some slightly water-damaged money. <laughs> What's funny? What's funny, Lloyd, is that you're so bad at this. You're giving crime a bad name, mate. Stick to cooking, I think. Let's go, Mr Menzies. Superintendent. Good news, I hear. <laughs> Absolutely. Take a seat. The one million dollars is on its way as we speak. Well, most of it. I believe the offender has already spent some of it. Oh, you amaze me. The Olympic people were very happy with this morning's exercise. Hmm. Team effort, of course. Oh, of course. Oh, I'm so happy with the outcome, I'd appreciate the documents on computer disk. No sooner said than done. I'll get Helen to download them for you. Uh, but, Jeff, you just said team effort. If you'd been working on it, I'd assume the files would be on your computer disk as well. Dear, well, when I said team effort, I was talking purely as team leader. In individual terms, of Helen's work. Go to work. Oh, I must remember to tell the Olympic people that. Of course. Yeah, we'll ask him. I'm not going to say anything to my lawyer gets here. Well, Miss Bridgman should be here soon. Probably here already, actually. Just so you know. Hey, 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 hey hang on. No hang on. way. If I get a phone call, your husband is alive. Well, I wish you were! Listen, no! Uh, Miss Robinson, we're going to take your husband to the interview room. Now, if you'd like to stay here, get someone to get you a cup of tea, OK? Waste your time, Miss Bridgman. Uh, your client was caught with what remains of a uh, million dollars he stole from the police department yesterday, uh, together with a newspaper he used to piece um, a further demand for two million, plus a fax machine he used to send it, plus a quantity of cocaine. So it's all over by the shouting. In that case, I would like to talk to my client alone in order to establish whether there may be some way in which he can assist you. We don't need his assistance. When you hear what I've got to say, you might change your mind. Seven hundred and eighty thousand. Keep going. What's he think he's got to sell us? Same as they've all got his friends. Only what bits of paper can do to people. Yeah. Detectives. Let's go see the clowns. There's just a few things I want to get straight. Now, the person who wanted the million dollars, the original extortionist. No, no, that was someone else. Do you know them? Uh, for the tape, please. Yes, I know them. So were you involved in the original extortion attempt? Look, it was something that snowballed, something that got out of hand. It was simply a way of solving a business problem, and it all went wrong when Liz came to you people. Uh-huh. So tell us about this business problem. I sort of have, for a few years, been selling a little cocaine on the side, you know, to friends, small clientele. I'm not huge. I'm not a dealer as such. Well, that depends on the quantities involved, doesn't it? What I mean is I'm not Mr. Big. I'm not an international corporation. I'm not a supermarket. I'm hardly a corner store. Your wife says you're very anti-drugs. Your brother died of an overdose. Yeah, that's right. I, I am very anti-drugs. I used to use them myself, but not since my brother. 
So you don't use, you just sell to other people? It's a free market, no one's forcing them to buy. And who do you sell to? Friends, business acquaintances, music industry people. Uh-huh, people like Jerry Blast? I've never sold to Jerry. Eight hundred and fifty thousand. I've got a supplier, and over the years when I've been a little bit short of cash, he's given it to me on tick. Well, a few weeks back, I took delivery of about a million dollars worth. Did you sell it? Yes. And then? Then I, um... Took the money to the casino. You took money you owed a drug dealer to the casino. I'm very good at blackjack. Used to play a lot. Used to win. But Liz didn't like me gambling, so I gave it away. But when I saw all that money sitting there in one piece, I knew that I could solve every financial problem that we had or ever would have. I could solve all those problems with just a few hours at the table. But you... Lost. Lost a lot. So you suddenly owe a drug dealer a million dollars you don't have. But you've got a uh, house, you've got three restaurants, and it shouldn't have been that much of a problem raising the money. Well, listen, I have a family company. When I had my problem with gambling a few years back, she insisted that we set it up so that everything had to be both signatures. So you needed her signature? Yeah, and I didn't want to explain what had happened because then I'd have to tell her all about the, you know, the double life thing. Now tell me, Mr Menzies, how long has this double life thing been going on? since she came to live with me. The thing is, the dealer knew that I was good for it. If only I could find some way of getting her to sign off on selling one of the restaurants or upping the mortgages on the restaurants or the house, whatever. So the way to get her sign off was to uh, blackmail her? Well, we figured that when she saw the photos that were taken of her, she'd come to me. I'd play understanding husband, we'd raise the money and it'd all be over. But she didn't come to me, she came to you guys. I never dreamt she'd do that. But someone did. I mean, why else the bomb in the office? The dealer had her followed. He planted the bomb. You don't scare her. Get down! You gotta believe me. I didn't think she'd be there when it went off. When you set up the sting operation, I volunteered to deliver the money myself. The game plan was that I would divert around behind Clark Island and then go over the side in my scuba gear. Then I organized with the dealer for another bomb to take out the boat. But you hadn't given the dealer the money. You hold up in that apartment and started blackmailing your wife for two million bucks. Yeah, well, that idea came to me, you know? I was swimming ashore and suddenly I flashed on it. <laughs> the plan. I was going to take the money and run. Well, I don't know about that, Mr. Menzies. Now, how can you help us? I can give you the names of all the people who bought from me. No, we want the name of the dealer. I can't do that. Well, that's all we're interested in. Now, if you like, uh, I can call a break. You can discuss the facts of life with the client. OK? Our interview suspended at 4.35 p.m. Well, how much is left, Jeff? $972,845. In 24 hours, Lloyd Menzies spent $27,155. Yeah, he bought golf clubs, a fax machine, a whole new wardrobe. I could have done that for two. Yeah, but he's got expensive taste. You're lucky you didn't go to the new casino. Detectives? Oh, that was quick. He didn't have a lot to think about. My client informs me he knows about a shipment of cocaine which was recently picked up off a container ship off Sydney Heads. It's currently... We'd actually like to hear it from your client, Miss Bridgman. It's currently in a waterfront property at Broken Bay. Now, according to our sources, the shipment will be broken up for sale in this house, then transported by launch to a house here in Vaucluse. 
Once the consignment leaves the Bracken Bay premises, the SPG will surround it. Now, after the cocaine has been delivered to Port Clues, both premises will be raided simultaneously. Yeah, here they come. All right, they're on the boat and moving. Last. You're under arrest. You're not obliged to do or say anything unless you wish to do so. But whatever you say or do will be used in evidence. Do you understand that? You're going to tell me the charges? Oh, something to do with drug importation, dealing, demanding a million bucks, something like that. We'll think of something. Lord gave me up, right? I suppose bribes out of the question. That's tragic, Jerry. <laughs> really tragic. Got it. Yeah, thanks. Looking forward to it. As a commander of the negotiators, got my dates for the negotiators course. Oh, excellent. Congratulations. Thanks. Hey, good one. And to both of you. Yeah, I thought we played a pretty good match. Yeah, well, so I'm sorry to have to tell you that Lloyd Menzies, 15 minutes ago, was found hanged in his cell in the remand wing at Long Bay. And no suspicious circumstances. No suspicious circumstances? What, yesterday he gives up his dealer, today he's found necked in his cell, and I reckon there's no suspicious circumstances? Well, you know how it is, Frank. I mean, he was under protection, security was tight. Well, what a surveillance video show. Don't tell me there was a technical glitch. As it happens, Frank. That's right. Guess who got to him? Someone's going to have to inform the widow. Let the locals do it. I wished he was dead. I, I told him I wished he was dead. We all say things we don't mean. But if he killed himself? If he did. What? Lloyd didn't kill himself. He was killed. Oh, God. 
talked so much about him, I just didn't know. I mean, we had good years, you know. In the last few, I could feel us growing apart, but... That happens. Yeah. <laughs>